carefully drop it out. All right. Just like that. Okay, there we go. So, I think with our new chain and our viscous coupling, this transfer case is going to be in pretty good shape. Well, good news. Our transfer case is now mounted and we're all set to go ahead and reinstall our drive shafts. Now before we get the drive shafts reinstalled on the flanges, we need to go ahead and replace the universal joints. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and do our, dri our drive shaft view joints. We've got our rear drive shaft mounted. One end is in the vise. And uh, I've actually got it marked as to what end is the front. So this is the rear of the drive shaft. This is what attaches to our rear uh, differential. So I have gone through and validated this is where we made our mark. So I want to keep track of that. This corresponds to the mark on the flange we left on the differential. I've scribed a new mark into the drive shaft tube to where our U-joint goes in to this uh, other part of the flange here or other part of the yoke and uh, the idea is that when we remove the U-joint I want to assemble this part back the correct way the same way it was on the drive shaft and then when we put the drive shaft in it's back on the exact same bolt it was on the flange so we're not upsetting any of the way it was installed from the factory and how it was balanced we're putting it back identically the way it was albeit with new U-joints so here is our new U-joint. This one's greaseable. It has a cap that we can put in here after we add a little grease. That way it's serviceable as we go through it. But basically, these caps will come off, just like that. And that's what we'll do as we pop these out. We'll pop the cap off. Now, these caps have needle bearings in them. So as you pop the caps off, these needle bearings, if they're dry or there's not enough grease or you're not careful, they can actually fall, fall out or come out and that's not a huge deal since we're replacing these, but on this new one, it is a big deal. We want to be careful that we don't mess up those needle bearings. We want to be able to have this cap slide back on so those needle bearings don't fall out and get dirty, that we keep a little bit of grease on them, and that way, when we go to reassemble it, it slides together nicely. So let's put this one back in the box. So, essentially to get the U-joints out, what we're going to do is take a pair of pliers. We have the uh, kind of spicer snap rings in here. Uh, I have sprayed these last night with some uh, PB blasters, some rust penetrant, but we'll compress these with a pair of pliers and pop out these snap rings. Let's make sure these are actually loose. There we go. Do this. go. Okay, so that's our snap ring removed. Just need to get our shaft. I'm going to get all the snap rings out and then uh, we'll figure out how we want to do this. I'm probably going to remove this piece first and then we'll take the actual U-joint out of the drive shaft. So. All right, since we've got the ball joint removal tool, since we've got a ball joint press, we can actually use this as a press for our U-joints. We'll just get everything aligned properly. And then we'll go ahead and tighten it down. And that should go ahead and press out. Yeah, working just fine. So it makes it nice and easy to press out those U joints. Okay, just like that. There's no need to hammer on them. No need to use the shop press. This tool 
is very valuable. Remember, we use this for pushing in bushings, we've used it for ball joints, and now we've used it for few joints. Okay, so now that that's done, what we need to do is take our pliers, we'll go ahead and remove the cap with our pliers, the channel locks. All right, so there's one cap. And if we look inside, you can see our needle bearings in there. There they are. It's got a cool grease pattern in there too, so. All right, so that's one of our end caps, okay? And then we can go ahead and slide off our flange. Keep it the direction that it was. We can slide off our other end cap. Okay. Now, this has the mark that we made, so we'll keep that pointing up. And our drive shaft's currently up, and I'm going to go ahead and move it. I'm just going to rotate it 90 degrees so we can put the ball joint press on these caps and go ahead and remove these. So, let's go and get our ball joint tool. Again, I'm going to use the channel locks, they're a little easier. Pop this cap off. And we can slide out our U joint. Alright, so this is one of our new caps. And we can see uh, we've got our needle bearings in there. So I am going to take this tiny bit of grease. And even though it's got a little from the factory, I'm going to put a little more grease in there. Two things that will help hold the needle bearings in place and also make sure this is glued when we put it in. Now, you don't want to put too much grease on it. Too much grease is just going to cause it to uh, get overpacked and that will cause more problems than good. So. Go ahead and take our U joint. We're going to leave these caps on for now. Slide it in. Take our cap. Same tool. Put this cap on the end. And you should slide in pretty easy, so don't, you don't have to force it. We'll go ahead and Slowly and carefully cinch these in. Now the key is you want to make sure again that your needle bearings didn't fall and that they're not, you're not getting hung up as you're pushing this in. Okay, so we got one of them partially seated. We're going to flip the tool around so we can push this one in and have this cup rest on our end. Okay. 
Again, we very little force needed. Slide in pretty good. Okay, so pretty much all you gotta do, whoops, all you gotta do at this point is make sure you've got them seated enough that you can get your snap rings in, which it looks like we do. Okay, and it looks like there's a different snap ring. See this here has the where the grease fitting goes. They give you a different type of snap ring for that one. And that way you'll have the ability to put the cap on and also put a grease fitting on it when it comes time. So we'll need to remember that for that one, but in the meantime, should be able to go ahead and install this. got our U-joint half installed. Now we need to go ahead and rotate this so that our mark is up top. Pop off our bearing caps, being very careful not to upset those needle bearings. Like we did before, we'll put just a tiny bit more grease in them. I'm ready to install. We'll take this with our mark, corresponding mark up top. Ah, there we go. All right, there's, <laughs> my bad. So make, all right, so we'll go ahead and slide this on. Make sure you slide it in far enough over this flange so that you're able to get it on. And then take one of your caps and install it. Another cap, and deal. Make sure your needle bearings don't get messed up. And this will go just like the uh, other side. Just pull right here. And the name of the game is not putting too much pressure. Let the tool do its work. And if something's getting hung up on this, you know that you've maybe had the needle bearings drop or something, something that shouldn't have happened go on. So you'll want to stop and evaluate. Um, far enough. So we knew to flip it because basically this one got seated far enough into our flange where we'd be able to put our snap ring in and it pushes more from here. So this is going to push this in whereas this will kind of hold. So we're going to go ahead and push this one in the remainder of the way and that should seat it. Hope that makes sense. Like, see what I was talking about, I pushed this one just a tad bit too far. So now it looks like our snap ring groove is covered up slightly. I'm just gonna come back through here. Push this one in just a tiny bit. Really only has to go about a millimeter. There we go. Cool. All right, so let's flip this up so you can see. So this is our the one with the hole for the grease fitting. I'm just using a pair of long needle nose. Just be doing the trick. Okay, so once it's in, take our screwdriver. That pops down into the flange and locks in place. Yeah. 
seated in our groove and our new U-joint is installed and locked in. We can go ahead and install the grease fitting that comes with it. Looks like this just takes a screwdriver and we'll screw in. Alright, so that is one of our U-joints installed. So we've got the same deal on the other end. We're going to do exactly the same steps and then pretty much the same on the front. We'll show you when we pull that one off. Okay, so here's the other end of the rear drive shaft. And as you can see, I went ahead and took some masking tape when I had removed it to label that this was the front side. And also wrapped some tape around the bolts. All right, so same deal as before. We're first going to remove all of these uh, snap rings. Then we're going to press them out and press it back in. All right, we got our last one popped in. So this drive shaft is now rebuilt. So our front, this is our front drive shaft mounted up and pretty much we're going to do the same thing to get it off. The only difference is this end goes on the actual yoke on the differential and has the strap bolts that hold it in kind of the classic way. So all we got to do is pop these two out and install our new U-joint and then just make sure that we're careful that we don't lose our caps as we reinstall it. And then we just bolt it down. So this one's easy. All we got to do is this side. Yep, that's seated in there. one is seated in there. Right, so we're good. So now we want to be careful that we don't lose the caps off the other end. So to do that, now they shouldn't pop off, but just in case, go ahead and put a zip tie on the And as we go to install this, we can we'll cut these off. These will just help protect those end caps so we don't lose them. As soon as we go to install it, we'll cut these off. And uh, this way we can store it and we don't have to worry too much. All right, our drive shafts are rebuilt and ready to be reinstalled. Okay, so here's our front drive shaft and I've already reinstalled our rear drive shaft. We didn't do any camera on that, it was pretty simple. Um, the only thing we did was, since we reused the bolts, I, I hit them with a wire, wire wheel. Got the bolts cleaned up, we used some red thread locker, and also some of this thread sealant. It's basically almost like liquid Teflon tape. So, but that uh, was recommended, both thread sealant and thread locker was recommended, so that's what we used. And other than that, um, you know, just had to put the car in, in neutral and, you know, rotate it so we could get them tightened. And they do ask that you go in a crisscross pattern as you torque them down. So we did that and made sure everything is tight. Now a key point to know on these, the Mountaineer and I, the Explorer as well from the same time frame, they use an electronic interlock for the brake uh, release for you know moving out of park. So we have our we had our battery out, so we weren't able to shift it out of park. So I had to pop the battery back in temporarily just to do that. There is a release mechanism in the steering column. I think it's up underneath. There's an access panel, you can get to it, but I said, heck with it. Our battery's right there, just slid it in, and you plugged it in, we were able to do it and, and get it moved, so. We're gonna do the same for the front. Now, the difference is, if you remember, we've got these strap bolts here, and we don't actually have to put the snap rings on them because the actual flan um, yoke flange on the uh, front differential has a spot that the cups sit in, so you just have to make sure that they're sitting in there and then you can go ahead and put your straps and strap bolts on. Now I'm not going to reuse these. Um, if you remember, these have the T30 Torx fit. They're Loctite from the factory. They're tough to get out. Um, although I do plan to Loctite the new ones, I'm going to go with a hex head. So we're able to get these from AC Delco. Looks like the uh, part number is 45U0504. And this is the strap bolt kit that fits our front axle. I just went with the AC Delco, probably because they were in stock, for a particular reason. But we've got some nice, got, got some nice hex head bolts with that. So we'll use these new strap bolts here and we don't have to fight with these T30 Torx anymore. Though putting them back in probably wouldn't be an issue. Still, if we ever take it off again, we, we have some nice hex heads we can do. And that way I'm comfortable Loctite and not worried. Now these are a pretty low torque, the leave it 13. Uh, foot pounds, check it in the manual, and then of course you have our parts in the back. I think it's like 20 or something like that. I'm gonna have to look up what those are. So these will go in. 
well. So we're gonna go ahead and reinstall the front drive shafts. And like I said, you saw us take it out in our all-wheel drive diagnostic video. It's pretty much the reverse of that. We're gonna slide it up. You have to be very careful of this piece. And we have to inspect on the uh, transfer case and make sure that you know, it hasn't been damaged and hasn't popped out. So we want to be very careful as we slide that back in. Other than that, let's just find your marks that you made as you took it out. And then go ahead and reinstall it, matching up those marks. Okay, I thought I'd show you a little bit of our front drive shaft tentatively reinstalled. Got one of the bolts started on our first series of the six that attached to the transfer case end. <laughs> we did inspect the cup and the coupler and made sure they were in good shape. And then up here, as you can see, we've lined everything up and we've got to make sure our bearing cup is within the actual yoke. And then we'll be able to put our new straps and strap bolts on. I'm gonna go ahead and lock tight everything and do that, get everything started to hand tight, and then we'll come back and go ahead and torque everything down. Now to do that, just like on the back, which we didn't film, but uh, we have to do a crisscross pattern. So on the four, it's across, but on six, it's this one, that one here, do, 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 all six. So that means that you're probably gonna have to spin the drive shaft at least six times. And that can be a pain, so if you've got someone who can lend you a hand who can sit up in the vehicle and uh, put it in shift and park as you move it, uh, go ahead and do that. Just one thing to remember, as you turn the drive shaft, in neutral and put it back in park, there's going to be a little bit of movement before it clicks, so don't move it too far so that as you go to tighten it, it clicks and you can't can't actually tighten it. Okay, and these are you know fairly low torque, but again, check the service manual as you do it. We're going to go ahead and get all the bolts loctited and put in uh, to hand tight, and then we'll go ahead and torque them down. Okay, we have our drive front drive shaft torqued. We did the cross hatch pattern on the torquing and have the drive shaft turn every time we needed to, and as you can Hopefully, see, made a little mark on the head of each bolt as we got it tightened. That way we knew we went all the way around. Uh, those were, I think, 22 foot-pounds on the transfer case side. And we've got our new strap bolts. On the uh, differential side, those were at 13 foot-pounds. And those are done as well. Okay, so we're here in the Mountaineer and we're going to do the same test we did earlier. So now all the repairs are done. As you can see, we haven't detailed the interior yet. But uh, we want to test to see if the all-wheel drive binding's gone. So we're going to do the same test. We're going to do some tight radius turns on our gravel drive and see if we get the binding that we had. Okay, so 